author and columnist Mark Stein is on the fence on that question. He joins us tonight to deliver his verdict. Mark well, Stein. I, I was on the fence, Tucker. Uh, she lost because she was a stink of a candidate. But look, it isn't funny anymore. I mean, basically, this is the woman who is more responsible than anyone uh, for the totally pointless and discreditable Russian investigation that yeah. destroyed your first guest's life, uh, Papadopoulos. Uh, we had all this talk in November 2016 about how, oh, you know, America's the only country that has the peaceful transfer of power, which I always find a little odd because I can't remember remember the last time I saw a Belgian or Danish prime minister hanging from a lamppost. But the fact is that the more people who said it, the more it became conditional because it was her refusal to lose gracefully that in fact enabled this last disgusting two years uh, in which the losing parties, uh, uh, men on the inside, have, have uh, conducted an investigation into the duly elected president. It's quite disgraceful. She's quite disgraceful. Uh, and to listen to your friend Richard Goodstein, I like Richard, but for him laughing at what happened to Papa, Papadopoulos landed at Washington uh, and the FBI agent seized him and put him in shackles, shackles for doing nothing. And that's all on Hillary because she could, didn't know how to lose, because Clintons shouldn't lose. And she's lecturing us about tyranny. Mm. Amazing. No. Yeah. No. It, it, the, the Self-awareness is in short supply, I would say, in Washington. Mark Stein. Absol absolutely. And it could happen to Richard and all the other defenders of Hillary Clinton, too. Right. Yep, that's true. Hope it doesn't. Mark Stein, great no. to see you tonight. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Tucker. Good to be with you. Well, for the second time in just two weeks, one of the president's nominees to the Federal Reserve Board has withdrawn after his character was attacked. They said almost nothing about his views on economics, but for the moment he was nominated, Heritage Foundation senior fellow Michael rather Stephen Moore was Michael Moore. Stephen Moore was tarred as a woman hater, a nut job, a racist. Unbelievable. Every vulnerability was hyped to hysterical proportions. It all had shades the Brett Kavanaugh hearings just several months ago. I love teaching law, but thanks to what some of you on this side of the committee have unleashed, I may never be able to teach again. My family and my name have been totally and permanently destroyed <coughs> by vicious and false additional accusations. The Swetnick thing is a joke. That is a farce. Ten days passed where all this nonsense is coming out and these things are printed and run breathlessly by cable news. You know, I wanted a hearing the next day. I, my family's been destroyed by this, Senator. Destroyed. Yeah, and he's not the only one. A lot of people have been destroyed by the left in the last couple of years. Kavanaugh made it through. Steve Moore hasn't been so lucky. But we're happy to have him on this show anyway, or maybe especially now. Stephen Moore is the author of the book Trumponomics, and he joins us on set. Um, so, S S Stephen Moore, I mean, you can defend yourself, but let me just say what I was struck by watching your character mm -hmm. get impugned is that nobody even mentioned your views on hmm. relevant issues at all. It was, you're a bad person because you told a joke that must not have been a joke. You must be a bigot. I was fascinated to see that CNN, where you worked up until about 20 minutes ago, leading the charge against you. How does that work? Well, first of all, let me just say that, um, you know, I, I'm bummed out today because I hate quitting. I'm not a quitter. Yeah. And, and so I'm sad about that. And people, by the way, all over the, I'd be in airports, I'd be at, you know, uh, the, at the restaurants. And people would come up to me. I mean, people were so great to me about, you know, don't let these jackals get you. Um, they are jackals. And what, what surprised me, Tucker, and look, I'm, I'm not playing the victim here because the truth is I have said a lot. I have a two mile long paper trail. I've given 500 speeches and written a lot of articles. And I've said things that are in politic and things that oh, actually. Did you tell a joke? Did you make the mistake of telling a joke? Most, well, damn all you the, for telling Almost a joke. all of the things that were, were jokes. Look, I'm, again, I'm not saying that uh, everything I've said, you know, some of the things I've said are stupid, and there should, I, I wish there were a statute of limitation on stupidity because some of these things were 20, 25 years old. Who cares? Said, but, but here's the point. I had hoped 
you know, I was excited about this because when Trump asked me to do this, I'm like, this is great. I will have this ability to really talk about the economy and the amazing things that we can do if I'm at the Fed. And it never even came up. I mean, the, the left understood from the first couple of days because they did surveys of the senators. The Republican senators love, you know, my economic views and so on. And that's when they launched this this character assassination. But I don't understand. By the way, let me just say one thing. Yeah. They went into my the most amazing thing. They the the uh, Washington Post, New York Times, CNN, they got my divorce settlement from 10 years ago unsealed so they could just put all of this dirt on them on me that had nothing to do with my qualifications to be on the fed uh, as i've said a hundred times i'll debate anybody on the economy and what we should do and what the best monetary policy is it, it almost the, never the, came the up the white house never should have given into this they should have no, they, no, no, they no, should they shouldn't have uh, you they know, shouldn't have i gotta just, tell you one thing know, about that's this. more weakness draws more aggression. Well, there's a lot of truth to that because, you know, but I will say this, you know, who was the biggest fight, the guy who did not want me to withdraw from this? Donald J. Trump. Good. Well, I believe I mean, that. That's what I love about him. He's a fighter. And, and I just, at the I, end, I just had to say, I, I don't know if I can I believe it. Get so, so really quick, I thought you just resigned at CNN. They wanted you to work there. And then yeah. I'm watching tonight and they're telling me that, like, you're evil. How well, this that... is a little awkward for, for CNN because every night they trash me now when for the last two and a half years I've been their senior economics writer. And the things that they're talking about now are things that happened 20 years ago. Wait a minute. If I'm such a scoundrel and sexist, why did they have me on every night? What's the answer? <laughs> I mean, well, I mean, I, I don't know. You'd have to ask them. But but the point is, you know, I don't think you should hold accountable, uh, you know, for things that were in 25 years ago. They, they even looked at my my Christmas letters that we would send out to friends and family that were just kind of jokes. We'd make fun of everyone. And you got to stand up to these people. Yeah. I mean, you, it, this is it's disgusting what's happening. It's disgusting it what happened to you and Kavanaugh and a lot of other people in this city. Anyway, Stephen Moore, you're always welcome on the show. Thank you. For Thank you. Tucker. Good to see you. Look, I think what they should be focusing on is how did this mess start? How did this whole investigation start? Because I think it's corrupt as hell. And I think what's happened between Comey and McCabe mm -hmm. and uh, Brennan and all of these people and Strzok and his lover, Lisa Page, mm -hmm. there's tremendous things that people want to find out. And they really want to find it out. And I hope they're going to. That a new clip from Catherine Harridge's exclusive interview with President Trump done within the last hour. And with that, let's bring in our panel. Byron New York, chief political correspondent, correspondent of the Washington Examiner. Molly Hemingway, senior editor at The Federalist. And Zeke Miller, White House reporter for the Associated Press. So, lots to chew over in that brand new interview. Zeke, you sit there front row in the briefing room every day. What stuck out to you from this interview? Well, uh, his commentary on the 2020 field, just how eager he was to inject himself in that conversation we've seen from the president all throughout this, uh, this budding Democratic primary. He wants to be the center player. He's not seeding the attention. He wants to be the pundit in chief, and that we saw that on display here again. Speaking of which, let's go to a clip of him speaking about former Vice President Joe Biden getting into the race. Biden seems to have a lead. I'd be very happy if it were Biden. Happy Sleepy why? Joe. Uh, I think he does a. I think he did a bad job. I'd be running against. So him you and think Obama. he's beatable? I, I just don't think he'd be a very good candidate. I mean, we'll see what happens. All right, Molly, what stuck out to you? I think that clip that you aired just before this last one where he talks about investigating how this whole conspiracy theory began. So if you look at what's been happening in the news the last couple of days, you see a lot of people in the media, people who are politicians, people who used to be in the government, who perpetuated this false story that Donald Trump was a traitor. And it's worth remembering, treason is a crime punishable by death. It turns out the president was falsely accused of this. And we still don't understand how was it that he came to be falsely accused? Who was involved in this? Just today, the New York Times Times reveals that there were multiple overseas intelligence assets run against the campaign. And there's something kind of, you know, there's, you're, there's it's an interesting story that needs to be looked through, but it looks like this was part of a much larger operation than we have thus far been told. We're going to have to find out a lot more. Attorney General Barr said he wanted to find out, get to the end of the Russia investigation, mm -hmm. let that go through unimpeded. But he also wants to know just what was happening over the Department of Justice and FBI. And so hopefully we'll start to get some answers there. 
Well, you, you do have this real division between the parties on this on Capitol Hill because you had the Republicans wanting to do exactly that investigation and the Attorney General yesterday dropped a big hint that he thinks there might have been more surveillance going on, on of the Trump campaign than we knew about. On the other hand, you have the Democrats wanting to reinvestigate the uh, Mueller report and stage hearings on it. And I think the reason you're seeing so much um, emphasis on trying to get the White House counsel uh, in front of, of cameras uh, in the House is that the member Democrats in the House want to make this a television show. They, they don't think that the American public is going to get into the weeds of a 448 caref page carefully written report. They want drama and they want pictures. And so that's why you're seeing this push to get Don McGahn. Speaking of the former White House counsel, let's take a listen to that clip. I've had him testifying already for 30 hours. So is the answer no? And it's really so. I don't think I can let him and then tell everybody else you can't, because especially him, because he was a counsel. Mm -hmm. So they've testified for many hours, all of them. Many, many, so many So as far people. as you're concerned, it's really it's it's kind of done. I can't it's say, done. well, one can and the others can't. Okay, so, so is it done? I would say it's done. Zeke, your thoughts on the McGahn matter and whether or not he'll testify? Well, I think the president just laid out a pretty clear marker that he's not going to allow it. We saw that earlier today also in Emmett Flood's letter to uh, the Attorney General um, responding to the Mueller report, essentially arguing that the president's not going to cooperate in this investigation any further, on, certainly when it comes to congressional matters, that the, the special counsel's cooperation that the president gave documents, allowed his, uh, his, his people to testify, uh, in interview with the special counsel, that was a one-time deal, one-time offer. That is not going to be the case with these congressional investigations. That's going to set up quite a, quite, you know, quite a legal show showdown and certainly a political showdown. Both parties seem to want to continue this fight. And so it would be interesting to see how that plays out going forward. And I think that's a key point that the Republicans definitely now in a new way that you haven't seen previously definitely want to continue this fight. They patiently waited. They said they were promised that there was treasonous collusion with Russia to steal the election. The end of that report came out. No one indicted for collusion with Russia. No indictments for obstruction. And I think part of what you're seeing on the Hill where people want to have all these hearings is not just that they're frustrated that everything ended. They promised their constituency that not only was there, was there treason, that they would be able to oust the president. And this report came out as a dud. At the same time, the people who were involved with it might be held accountable. And I think they're trying to avoid having those people held accountable. Yeah, Tennessee Congressman Steve Cohen with a bucket of KFC chicken and a porcelain chicken calling the Attorney General a chicken. You had a House Speaker Nancy Pelosi today making a pretty serious charge against Attorney General William Barr. Take a listen to this. It wasn't about technicalities. It wasn't about who wrote the letter and how he, mis how he characterized the letter. That's interesting. But what is deadly serious about it is the Attorney General of the United States of America was not telling the truth to the Congress of the United States. That's a crime. Well, on the judiciary part of it, it did kind of descend into farce today with the, with the fried chicken. It was all over in about uh, 20 minutes. Uh, but what the, what the speaker is saying is really, really uh, quite serious. Yesterday, in front of the Senate, Barr gave a very plausible explanation for his uh, testimony on this issue that Nancy Pelosi said he is lying about. But the House controls itself. They could vote the, uh, the Attorney General in contempt. They could take some sort of action against him. And she clearly seems to have judged this case already.